Hello and welcome to HD Movie Talk. I'm your host, Dean, also known as Dean's Beans. And as always, I'm joined by my friend, Harlan, aka Fluffy Duffy. Hello. Hello. How are you? I am I am great. How are you? I'm good. Um, for everyone at home, he's lying. That's not what he told me just before we started. I don't know why we have oh. to have like a second conversation whenever we start. Because I've already asked you. I know, it's you always kind of... I'm, I'm very sick right now. <laughs> well, not very sick. I'm not throwing up, but I got it. I got occupants to my nose right now. Yeah, that that was me last time we recorded. So, um, thanks, Dean. Get you over. Got me it. sick. Yeah, because I think it is in the podcast canon that we're filming this in the same room. Oh, oh, is it? Is that true? I think we've mentioned that before. Anyway, uh, moving on. What <laughs> this is episode four. Of the silver lining, is that correct? Yeah, episode yeah. four. Wow, episode ten of the podcast overall, and we are talking about one of the worst movies in all of existence, in my opinion. No, yeah, that's fair. I I agree with you there. Ho- Holmes and Watson. Oh yeah. Before before we we haven't really done this in the past, but before we um start doing our normal thing, do you want to just talk about like us actually watching this movie for the first time? Because we have had this conversation in yes. the past. So I'll get. I'll give you my story. Go ahead. Me and my friend. This is before it, it, this movie. When this movie? Oh shoot! When did this movie come out? Holmes and Watson. Twenty eighteen. Christmas twenty eighteen. Okay, it came out Christmas twenty eighteen. Like for some reason, me and my friend, we didn't buy tickets. We just went to the box office. We didn't buy tickets online. We just went to the box office to see Aquaman. But Aquaman was all sold out. And we're like, oh, okay, whatever, whatever. But what other movies are out? Holmes and Watson was also out. And we're like, oh, Will Ferrell, John C. Riley, this should be a good movie. So we bought tickets to Holmes and Watson. And this is like right around where my like frontal cortex, my brain was like starting to develop. And so I remember walking out of this movie and being like, I don't think I like that. <laughs> <laughs> no i to be fair my story is very similar but the difference is um that was at the age where i did go and watch every movie that came out in cinema not every movie but a lot of movies and i went to watch this one with my mother she slept through most of it but still claims it's the <laughs> worst movie she's ever seen while um at the time i definitely thought this was the worst movie i've ever seen and i was sitting in, and i was like oh so this is what like a really bad movie looks like yeah this is what a bad movie is this is honestly at the time I was like, this is this is the one. And there's only two movies that I've watched since watching this, which I think could be almost as bad or more bad. Really? Yeah. Only what? two movies which I think are like on the same level as this. What other two movies are you thinking of? Cats. Oh yeah. And Artemis Fowl. I... Oh, okay. Okay, that's fair. And just I just this movie. Oh. But I feel like what this movie differs from those two is like Sher- Sherlock Holmes is like an iconic figure and adored by millions of people. So this is more yeah, of like yeah. a criminal act than <laughs> he, Artemis he Fowl could ever. Definitely like easily one of the most iconic fictional characters ever. Yes. I, w- I would say especially more in your part of the world than america fun fact but still sorry to step on your toes here but sherlock holmes is the character who has been portrayed by the most actors in the history of anything wow and this movie counts yeah will ferrell is on that list along with robert downey jr and benedict cumberbatch and others henry cavill ah henry cavill that's a good one he's english he is english yeah, good on him. Anyway, let, let's stop talking about better things and start talking about bad things. Uh, yes. So, so so normally we give like a plot synopsis for this movie and I I struggled with this one because they're, they're, like I don't know what counts as plot in this movie. It's basically, it's just a humorous take on uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes, which is obviously the Arthur Conan Doyle one. And, it's, and, and the plot basically, it, I don't even... 
let me just I'm I'm gonna actually look what I wrote down because trying to tell you now I couldn't tell you what the plot <laughs> of this movie is. <laughs> I'm like that basically I Moriarty, I forgot his name, uh is is has escaped from prison and there's a murder on the loose and someone told Queen Victoria that she's going to get killed in a certain number of days and Sherlock Holmes and John Watson have to stop the killer. Yes. That's the best way you can put it. Um, so now I'm going to do what I do best and I'm going to give some fun facts about this movie. Can you give us movie. the intro, please? Here are some fun facts about Holmes and Watson. After bad test screenings, the studio tried selling this movie to Netflix, but they denied it. It was so bad. Netflix said, no thanks. That's funny. And then during its opening weekend, theaters reported a record-breaking amount of walkouts. Wow. And then back in 2008, this movie was supposed to star Will Ferrell and Sasha Baron Cohen. I think that's interesting. But it, ne- it it just stayed in development hell and re-entered development in like 2017 or something I like that. I think I'd quite like to see Sasha Baron Cohen do I, this. Yes, but like, I don't know if Sasha Baron Cohen was a part of it. I don't know who would play Holmes and who would play Watson. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. You need the distinction there. So, so yeah, do you have any more fun facts? Yeah, one more. Well, actually, two more. But we'll, this last one we'll go into for a while. And Christopher Beck, Christoph Beck, my bad, um, wrote a score for this film, but it was never used. Nice. Yeah. And the last fact. Yes. And this is I I, I briefly mentioned this to you before the yeah, we started recording. Yes. And I knew nothing about this. The English the. In that England, the British. UK, Brit, the British version of this movie is different than the American version. See, I didn't know this. So, Dean, you describe how Holmes meets Watson in your version. Basically, Watson had just gone back from the Afghan war. Um, he's standing on top of a um, of of like a of a of like a three story building, and he's planning on killing himself. And um and he hasn't met Sherlock at the time, and Sherlock is like caressing this giant aubergine that he's grown. Um, you'd call it an eggplant. No, it's not an aubergine. It's like a um marrow. I don't know. Do you, a marrow. It's just a big cucumber, like massive. Like I don't. I don't, I don't really think we even have those. N- you no, know, but it's like a comically large vegetable, and that's why he loves it so oh. much. And he's stroking okay. it, and he's spanking it a little bit, and he's talking dirty to it. And then he sees that uh, Watson is about to kill himself and jump off the building. And he's worried because it looks like Watson is about to come and jump on his big vegetable. And he's like, oh, don't jump off. Go jump off the building over there. And he goes, there's lots of other ways to kill yourself. You can drink poison and stuff like that. And, and because he's on top of the building, Watson can't hear him. And Watson's like, oh, you're right. I won't kill myself. Um, my, my life's pretty great. And then he falls off the building anyway. And lands on the marrow and is completely fine. This movie's so bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How does um, it start for you? So, do you ever see Sherlock at school? No. As a kid? No. Okay. So, for us, the movie starts out with Sherlock being in school. Yeah. And he's bullied by kids. He kisses a donkey butt. And then he's bullied by kids, and then he's to he goes into Sherlock mode, if you want to call it, and he tells everybody to stop, and he's crying, and then he sucks the tear back into his eye, and then turns into Sherlock Holmes and gets every single kid expelled, every kid that bullied what? him gets them expelled, and then the only kid left that he didn't expel is Watson, and that's how they met. I'm so confused. Why did do you know why they changed it? Do you have that? No, I don't know why. And for us, when Watson meets the Queen, he's dressed in soldier gear. Yeah. You know what I mean? What one yeah, would yeah. wear to that event? Yeah, yeah. We don't know why. It never ever touches on 
Watson going to the Afghan war. That's interesting. And I have I have another question. Before the song begins. Oh, d- okay, yeah. Before the song begins, does do you have the do you see like when Will Ferrell cries? Yeah. See, you that wouldn't make sense to you because you didn't have the scene where when he was a kid, he sucked the tear back into his eye. You're right. I did think that was weird. That's so weird. I don't know why they did that. That's I don't. So... No, but in the in the actual books, I don't know loads about Sherlock. In the actual books, Watson is a veteran, so I th- they have actually kept that in. Yeah, he's one of the few. There, there are some stuff in there which like are similar, but you know, just just overall bad. I think I think a good way to start this conversation about this movie is what what are your thoughts on Will Ferrell and John C. Riley in general? In general, as actors, yeah, I I I. I... I really like Will Ferrell and John C. Riley. I think they're very funny. Step Brothers is I, I like Step Brothers. It's not my favorite, but I could definitely respect them as like a comedy yeah, duo. I, I think I do I really like both of them and I think they both have really good stuff. I'm just I, I think I like them both less when they do things together from when they do mm. something good by themselves. But I think that's kind of just my taste in comedy. This is this is very like American comedy, and there is some good American comedy, but this is like that taken to the max, if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay. So, should we get into the good? What we liked about this movie? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now, should we get into the bad? <laughs> <laughs> no. I've got quite. I've got a few things here. Do you want to start us off? Yeah. So, I think I think what's really hard about talking about a bad comedy movie is that comedy is extremely subjective yes and considering i'm going into this movie thinking it's a bad movie all the jokes seem bad to me so i tried to like look at the jokes and be like is this kind of funny at least so most of the things in here are they kind of worked yeah no i think there's a lot of jokes that like would have looked good on paper but then either like the performance or the editing or something like that, it didn't really, um, it didn't come out over well because I think throughout this movie, John C. Riley and Will Ferrell are doing a very over the top performance and I'm not sure why, like way too over the top. Right. Like it's, it doesn't work. Yeah. And I feel like there are a lot of these jokes could have worked. Yes. So I'll start off with the throw up bit I oh, think it's the, um... funny how Sherlock Holmes can't stand the sight of dead bodies see that's one of the things I mean where I think where you say it like that that's a funny moment but I didn't find the actual scene funny I think that's a I, I yeah. honestly I had to remove myself from watching the movie and I'm like should this be funny <laughs> is it funny Okay, I'll put that because I was I was just desperately looking for good yeah. parts. Of the, the movie. I found I like something I found funny was the um, mind conversation he had with his brother. Yeah, I, I have that, that too. I thought that interaction was funny. And then John C. Riley joins in, <laughs> and it's just like it's just like noises. And I thought that was a good joke. Yeah, that I, that's the next one of my thing too. Um, the disguise bit. Yeah, where... I wrote I wrote that down as something that could be funny if it was like, I, I the the mustache thing I saw that coming and I'm like, oh okay, yeah, that yeah. was funny. But the the thing that made me write down the list is how like after that he just like ruins John C. Oh, Riley yeah, yeah, yeah. and just I thought that was like I'm like I feel, All like, right. I feel like that mustache joke is like in a lot of things of going yeah, oh that... I've put a mustache on now and you can't even recognize me. Mustache? <laughs> yeah, I knew you were gonna. I was thinking of <laughs> Shark as well. There's a few things like like Perry the Platypus. It's similar to that kind of right. Thing. But you saw it coming though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm saying obviously Perry the Platypus is better than that. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Um, and I wrote down well. This is when I was going back and forth on a lot. But I wrote down Millie. That 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 question mark. Millie, which one's that? The girl who was raised as a feral cat. Yeah. Sometimes she's funny. I feel like it's just Will Ferrell standing next to her, which really puts me off. When he's all like, <laughs> oh, but there's something so interesting about you. Just shut up. 
this movie, man. Okay, well, I, I I liked the interaction, uh, parts of the interaction, not all of it. When when um, Holmes was saving Watson from the wheel he was tied to, um, it I I found it quite funny when oh, Holmes yeah. ran in and he went, "Good news, Watson, you're not guilty." <laughs> and then he's like, "I know." I'm like, "That's actually quite a good joke." But then the hugging bit goes on for too long. But it also did make me laugh when. Um, Watson then screams, "Get me off this effing wheel!" Yeah, that was awesome. I, that, that that's the last one I have written down. I and that yeah. made me giggle. And I I also liked the um, Billy Zane joke. Um, not oh. like I know much about Titanic, but I thought that that was actually like an intelligent joke. Which, yeah, which is rare for this movie. Even though this is the first Titanic, which yeah, doesn't really make much sense. But and yeah, no, this movie was set in like. 1867 so that's like 45 years before the Titanic went whatever um the last thing I have written down is when they when they said no shit Sherlock it wasn't necessarily funny but I was like "Ah, there it is that that's (laughs) like that's like another one of those jokes where are they actually there's actually like a hint of intelligence there so that that is that that is it for my list. I don't have anything else written down. Let me have a look. I think, yeah. Um, th- there's one more thing. This is a very small thing that made me laugh, and it's very specific. But it's just one time John C. Bridey said the word mosquito in a very funny way, and it made me laugh. I don't even remember how he said it, but I wrote it down. He's like. Oh, mosquito. No, he doesn't even say that. I I don't know. But it made me laugh. The -the over-the-top accents made me chuckle like once or twice. I did put the accents in my bad. Me too. But there was once or twice where we talking about bad. Um, I what is the worst part of this movie for you? And there is there is a right answer for this, I'm afraid. You can be incorrect. I don't, there's... There's too many to choose from. Yes. But I'm going to go... Damn, I don't know. Maybe the song? I think it's the song. Which... I just remember sitting in the cinema and then the song started and that was the bit where I think this movie fully cemented itself as the worst movie I'd ever seen up to that point where they just yeah. started singing and I was like and I, I actually just I think I remember when I saw that in this and I actually laughed but it was like laughing at the movie like I, I did not find a hint of it funny but I was like that is so stupid it's literally it's them being like okay we cannot find a good way to write a story where Sherlock find, figures out that he was wrong. So let's just write a song. It's just, it's not even a good song. No, it's not. It's like one of the throwaway tracks of a musical. And they didn't even like, there, there, there is like, there is no lead up to, to why, the, why there's a musical number and there's literally nothing. There's one line that references it after it happens. Right. And there's like, that was weird. And they just kept on moving. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the the line I was thinking was when he goes, oh, "I shouldn't have spent so much time singing." Yeah, yeah, that's it. And then I'm like, but they just didn't. Re- it's I just don't. I don't understand the. Oh, it was it was it was so bad. I, yeah, I remember seeing that and being like, "Oh, oh, this is bad. Like this is not work." This. I feel like. Literally, what this movie was it was like Will Ferrell and John C. Riley were like just like at each at one of their houses, just hanging out. And they're like, What if we did like a Sherlock Holmes movie? <laughs> yeah, and, and, then, and, then, and then they were like, Oh, can we do English accents? Oh, that doesn't matter. It's just, <laughs> yeah, we'll figure it out. See, the, the, the issue with joke accents, I think, because the accents were supposed to be funny, but. But it's the entire movie. Yeah, but it doesn't work when it's the two main characters for literally right. the entire movie. So, I'm just I'm I'm gonna start at the top of my list. Okay. And just work work down. Yeah. Number one, Trump. Okay. Listen, I don't want to get too he's, political. I'm sorry, but um, 
that's not actually a problem with this movie. That's a problem with America. <laughs> Anyways. Um... <laughs> Listen, uh, a good Trump joke every now and then. That's funny. Yeah. If like if you if you can do just like just like an American politics joke is funny. But this is just like they wore a make England great again hat. Yeah, yeah. And they devoted like an entire scene to be like, oh, but American politics, we elect our own shop. Shut I, up, Will Ferrell. Literally that whole time I was like, oh my god. And also you we don't need this. That movie like came out 2018. Two years later, it's just left the cycle of like in a way left the cycle of public consciousness. And like people don't make Trump jokes now for, for a very obvious reason. And literally two years after this movie came out, it's just not as funny anymore. Right. It's a dead joke. And even uh, like when you're, I feel like, if, like, okay, I obviously don't have the skills to make a comedy movie. Yeah. However, if I was to make a comedy movie, I would not want to make a topical political joke. Because no, you could, but just make it subtle and don't make right. it enticing. You don't watch a, you you don't watch Shrek, and then there's an entire scene dedicated to how dumb Bush is or Clinton. <laughs> it would have been. Would it have been Clinton? Yeah, Clinton. Wait, I don't know what year Shrek came out. I'll be honest with you. I think it came out in two thousand. I think I don't know. Clinton was elected. I don't... Why am I talking about US politics? Dude, anyway. Is, we don't know anything. <laughs> okay. Uh, n- the first thing I have on mine is... Um, they do reference this in the movie later on, so I, I could have taken it off my list. But it's just the opening scene. There's just too many, like, guns. I was like, what is going on when he walks into that courtroom and he starts <laughs> shooting everything? And I was like, does he not realise that this is set in England? I mean, there were guns then, but it just... I was kind of like, this is very American. <laughs> That one is like, and then they make a joke later on about like how Americans have guns. Like it, they make multiple jokes about it. I think it doesn't make sense, and it's like, why did this happen? I guess it's the absurdity of it could be funny, but it just didn't work. Oh, okay. Um, what's your next thing? The eyeliner Will Ferrell was wearing. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like that. It made me feel uncomfortable. I think it's just everything about the performances that these two give, I don't like. It's just a number, I think it's mostly the way they speak, but I feel like Will Ferrell pulls a lot of dumb faces, which I really don't yes. like. The best way I could sum up this movie is like, this could have been like an SNL skit, and it would <laughs> yeah. have worked. And then it could, people would have found that funny. Yeah. That's so true. <laughs> And so the next one on my list was the accents, because it, it doesn't work for the entire movie. No. But and then next I have onion, the onion scene. They're just <sighs> biting into onions. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Um, oh, I've got the pop song when they start getting drunk. That was very out of place. There's no like modern music in any of it apart from that one thing where suddenly. No. That is incorrect. There are multiple parts where there's modern music. I know just the one that really stands out. I can't even remember the song, but it's when they get in their drinks poured and then the music starts playing, and I'm like, what is this? No, something that really bothered me about this movie is it just like this is supposed to take place in like 1870, whatever, whatever time. 1862, I think we just said. But it there's music that bounces back from old to new to old to new. And it, it pisses me off because it's like, I don't know. It's like stick to one. It's, uh, and talking about new stuff, they uh, so much of the comedy in this movie is, hey, do you know what selfies are? What if we did them in 1867? Hey, do you know what wrestling is? What if we hit a guy with a chair in 1867? Hey, do you know what pulling a duck face is? Oh, you know that thing that was a thing in 2012? Nobody says that anymore, Will Ferrell. Okay. They did this selfie. I want to talk about this. They did this okay. selfie, and then they did duck lips, but he did not call it duck lips. He called he it platypus it a, lips. A, a duck-billed platypus. Oh. Uh, 
I paused the movie, rewound it, watched it again, so I could reconfirm that's what he said. And I have it written down here. It's just duck build platypus. I think the joke is that it's the wrong thing. It just the fact that it was happening, I was upset. I hate so much about what this movie chooses to be. <laughs> have you ever seen The Office? That that was what I that good. was kind okay. of what I was channeling. I there, was but... <laughs> good. Um, I have a question for you. Okay. Obviously, this movie. Although there, it is like very Americanized, mm-hmm. it is. It takes place in like British culture. It takes yes. In our is this movie channels. offensive? Offensive. <laughs> I kind of feel like I find it more just like. No, I see you say that, but I feel like there are more jokes making fun of America than there That's are. That's true. But what I think is offensive is they're like, oh, let's make a comedy movie about Sherlock Holmes and John Watson. Who are we going to hire? Yeah, Will Ferrell and John C. Riley. Like, it's not like I have a problem with them personally, but just just because the, the issue with the accents is what are they supposed to do instead? Because does it work in this really silly comedy movie if they try their best to do a real English accent? Well, Will Ferrell, he can act. And yes. so can John C. Riley. John C. Riley, have you ever seen Kong Skull Island? Yes, I He's have. He's great in that, I think. That's one which I really like him in. So both these actors have the chops to, like, you know, give serious delivery. So th- there's no doubt in my mind that if they put their minds to it, they could actually do a pretty good British accent. Yeah, yeah, but would that fit this movie if you're would that put you off the movie if you i mean obviously it would be better than what they do but would you not think why why are they well i, I feel like if they made a sherlock and home sherlock oh my sherlock and holmes oh holmes and watson movie where they were Amer- like english not american accents no that would also be bad there's no right answer i think no. is the issue correct um the, the right answer might I'll get to the right answer. Their English accents are obviously really, really bad. And it would have been really weird if they went American. So I don't really know what else they could have done. You know what I think they might have been able to do, actually? Oh, I think I might know what you're about to say. I think... I, I don't know what it is about these two actors, but I think they could do an Italian accent really well. Should we should we try out? I'll be Will Ferrell and you'll be John C. Riley. Yeah. Okay. Mamma mia, where is uh, my magnifying glass? Mamma mia, my nipples are milking. Mamma mia. We're going to talk about the lactating later. Any, any, what else do we not like? Um, um Miss Hudson. What the, um, she's like she's dubbed. The, s- y- yeah. Do you, do, have you noticed like how much like she speaks? Yeah. Her mouth isn't. And it, that might be done intentionally. Maybe it's just because she didn't do a very good Scottish accent. Uh, at the time potentially but literally she, yeah you hear her speak but her mouth does not move yeah yeah she did do she's probably got the best accent in this apart from the english actors who are in it there you probably like there is one actor in this who is an amazing english comedy actor but you probably wouldn't recognize him and he's in who? like he's um it was his name lestrade oh rob Bryden. Yeah, he's Welsh actually. He's not English, but same thing. I yeah, I don't know. Him he's at all. he's very funny. Like he is very very funny. But he he's not. Yeah, he's just in the English TV stuff. So like when I see. I see people like him, I'm like he can do funny stuff, but he just isn't given anything in this movie. But then John C. Riley and Will Ferrell can do funny stuff as well. This is true. And then obviously we have Voldemort, who gets oh yeah, who gets given literally nothing to do. I'd I'd quite like to see Ray Fiennes do some comedy stuff because I've never seen it. I mean, I haven't seen him in loads of stuff, to be fair. Yeah, me either. Um, and I, I I have another thing at forty four minutes and forty three seconds for the American version of the movie. Yeah, there is a shot that is just out of focus. Is there actually? Yes. <laughs> and then it cuts back and it's in focus. Oh my, that's so good. Do you know what what apparently was a big reason why a lot of people were like, oh, I'm going to like support this movie and things like that? What? Because this movie is directed 
by someone called Ethan Cohen. E-T-A-N Cohen. But in actual Hollywood, there, there, is a, there is a popular actor, popular director called Ethan Cohen. And he's directed good movies. Where Ethan Cohen has not directed any good movies. And I don't know if like Ethan Cohen is like, oh, I'm going to choose this as my name just so people think I'm him. But one of them does good movies and one of them doesn't. What else has Ethan? What, what has have... Ethan done? I didn't actually look. I just looked at Ethan because everyone's like, "Oh, this movie was directed by Ethan Cohen. He does good stuff, but it's not." He was a writer Men in Black on Three. Men in Black Three. I quite like Men in Black Black Three actually. Um, but that's the only thing here that I I watched and like. Oh, and he and he wrote some parts of Tropic Thunder. Oh, um. Thunder. Ethan Cohen has done Fargo, um, Hail Caesar, No Country for Old Men. Yeah, he's and a Santa. Of- he's a producer on The Big Lebowski, which is an amazing movie. There, he has a brother. They're, they they usually co-director. Yeah, the, the Cohen, Cohen brothers. brothers. Yeah, like yeah, The Big Lebowski is a bit is the main one there, which I'm like, that's a, an amazing movie. Yeah, but Ethan Cohen, I'm a bit like, come on, mate. And also, what is a travesty now? I'm looking on IMDb that apparently the co writer of Holmes and Watson is Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who is the writer of Sherlock Holmes, has got a co writing credit on this movie. Oh, man. <laughs> poor. poor guy. <laughs> it's not like he's been dead for like 100 years, but poor guy. <laughs> Longer than that, probably. I don't know that much about him. Okay, more, more bad things. Just, 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 just. <sighs> the the ending I dislike what I when dislike you say the, the ending end. like from where like how the movie wraps like you know when like I think it's kind of funny how like oh wait I know I completely forgot something I completely oh. forgot something rewind so in the scene where they're wrestling yeah Sherlock Holmes oh thank you for that sound effect by the way Sherlock Holmes has like this whole like he analyzes the yeah. way and the like, person's gonna, gonna throw this up and punch him in the gut and dodge the punch and right that would have been funny that could have been funny if it wasn't done worse in the same movie before that <laughs> because it was like in the B thing where they accidentally like open up the B thing yeah yeah and you saw that coming you knew when that was happening oh the glass is gonna crack yeah yeah yeah. But no, if that didn't I, happen, yeah, I think this that bit could have worked. But in my mind, when I thought about this movie before my rewatch today, I would always think, oh, um, there was the one funny joke in the movie, and that was when this happened in the wrestling ring. And then I rewatched it, and I go, no, that wasn't funny. No, it wasn't. It it it, it was meant to like. Oh, like, oh, wow, Sherlock Holmes is going to, like, beat this guy up. Yeah. Yeah. And you're supposed to be expecting that as the audience, then he doesn't, and he gets pounded. Yeah, but, okay, here's, here's a big problem I have with this movie. Like, a, like, one of the main problems I find with this movie is that they can't decide whether Sherlock is dumb or stupid. No, sorry, dumb. <laughs> <laughs> They can't decide. They can't decide if he is stupid or really intelligent. And I think they really just have to choose one and go with yeah. it. Because he's either because it changes. Sometimes he's like really sometimes he's like oh, figures stuff out like he nearly did the B thing and things like that. He's clearly very and like the mind conversations, he's clearly like very intelligent. But then right. other times he's like uh more uh bleh, uh bleh. <laughs> exactly like that. That's my impression of this movie. That was, that was a pretty good one. Okay, so now I'm going to fast forward back to where I was. <laughs> the ending. Yep, there we go. Um, the way the movie ends, like it ends off by Sherlock Holmes getting a co-detective plaque. All right, Watson getting a co-detective plaque. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> It confuses it's, you calling it Holmes and Watson. Yes, it does. <laughs> Anyways, 
but like what, Sherlock has this huge plaque over it. And I'm just like, there's no character development. <laughs> it's the same thing. Uh, 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 Maybe Watson's a little happier now, but like Sherlock didn't change. He learned what love is, I think, is supposed to be the thing. Oh, right. He did learn what love is. Because he was like, oh, I'm the smartest detective in the world, but never in the history of all my crime solving have I ever considered the fact that someone could be motivated to do something because of love. That has never come up in one of my previous cases. No one has ever done a crime motivated by, like, anger or love before. That's never happened in the history of the world. It's not like that's what all crimes are about. It's so dumb. I'm, I'm, I'll be back in a second. Oh, okay. Ah! Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I thought you were going to take like a piss or something. <laughs> I can't decide how much of that was for comedic effect and how much of that was just real anger. I'll go a little bit of both. Okay. Okay, so do you have anything else you need to get out about this movie? I think we just need to improve it. Okay. So, number one, the casting of this film. Okay, yes. I think that they they should go with English actors. Okay. Because there are, have you, I don't know if this is a thing overseas, but you've ever heard of Johnny English? Mr. Bean? Yeah, so it's yes, Johnny I've heard Johnny English. Johnny English is like a James Bond parody. Right. And it stars Rowan Atkinson, who is Mr. Bean. And it is very, very funny. Like I mean, of it, it's just very funny. And I think someone like him would do like a Sherlock Holmes thing really well. Or even Rowan Atkinson. As yeah, like Sherlock. He would do really good at that. And I can kind of see him as that. And it's just him. There's just and, and like it's not even like they go, oh, but Will Ferrell is has more pull. I mean, there's enough like popular English actors that you could choose two who are funny and do it. And I, I just don't think something about it. Just like Sherlock Holmes being dumb. If you're gonna go for that, yeah. sure. But then he can't be the center of the movie yeah i feel see see, this is i feel like if it if this was like an english comedy it would be like very a very different like type of comedy i where i feel like it i could work with him being stupid but i think they just needed to decide number one they need to decide whether he's stupid or intelligent and not keep switching between it yes and number two i think they they had to choose who was dumb and, and who was smart because I don't think you could have Watson and Holmes both as dumb people. I think you needed one of them to be a very intelligent person or like somewhat intelligent to kind of be like the straight man in the relationship. I think it but, could have been, I think this movie could have looked, look, oh my God. I think this movie could have worked a lot better if Sherlock was stupid and Holmes was actually very smart. Y- yeah, even the other way round works as well, I think. You said Sherlock and Holmes again. But, uh... God damn it. <laughs> but no, you're right. I feel like that could have worked. I- either you could even... Here- here's an idea. What about someone like Simon Pegg in this? He's popular. Simon right? Pegg and Rowan Atkinson? Well, ooh, maybe not those two as a combination. But just Why Simon not? Pegg you don't think that could work? Else. It could. Just a bit, bit of a random one, I think. It's just my thinking. But I think like Simon Pegg is a good he's he does very comedic stuff and he's popular. There's enough, is what I'm saying. There's enough people to choose from. I think um, something interesting they could have done is taken like Sherlock gets all the credit, but Watson is like really the one behind everything. Yeah, and then like yeah. I don't know. Like no, that, that works. Kind of the other one I chose was um I googled English actors and the first person to come up was Benedict Cumberbatch and I thought oh that would be very interesting. <laughs> Wait a <laughs> second. Wait and a then, second. And then moments later I saw Martin Freeman and I was like, oh that could be something. Man, they, those two, act, 
they maybe could make a good Sherlock and Watson which, combo. Which they? Hmm, that's a good question. I don't know. We'll have to see. They should they should make like a fan made trailer of those two in a yeah. Sherlock movie. That'd be cool. Yeah. Maybe we'll get that one day. I feel yeah. There's enough English actors you could go for. I think where you could be like, but then I think I feel like if they decided. No, okay, this is what I just realised, which is 100% true. If they were making this movie and they go, oh, but we need them both to be English actors, do you know who they would have cast as who? Watson without a shadow of a doubt in my mind? Who would have been Watson? James Corden. They would have gone, ah, oh, James Corden, he, he'd be a good Watson, and then Sherlock can be whoever. I don't like James Corden. I don't like James Corden. I don't think anybody in from what it sounds like, nobody in Britain likes Shane. No, we've got. Much. We used to really like him, and then he went to America, and now he's not funny anymore. Um, nobody really likes him here either. He, the thing that he was, he became famous for was he wrote a very funny TV show called Gavin and Stacey, and it, it, he wrote it with someone else. But it, it, it's very funny, and it's still like very popular. And it's still running. It years ago, no. Well, they did a Christmas special recently, but that was like, it doesn't, it's, it's, there's not a lot of it. There's like three series or something like that. But the reason I mentioned that is because Rob Brydon, who is Lestrade, is in that as well. And that's why I'm like, oh, he's oh. very funny because he's in it as well. Interesting. But yeah, James Corden hasn't done. No, he's done some funny stuff in the UK, but not since he's gone to America. I'm writing the end we can come up with our new okay so movie. i think i think step number one um is a new cast new cast and, and then, then number two i think i like the idea of one being smart and one being dumb yes well we said which is watson being smart and holmes being dumb something yes. we didn't actually talk about is what do you think of the um of the twist of who is the villain at the end. Well, it depends. We're, are we talking about when we figured it out or when the movie told us? <laughs> Just in general of, um, I forgot her name. Hudson. Hudson. That's it. I remember when they streamed it for Hudson. two minutes. And she was having sex with like Winston Fisherman. Churchill or whoever. <laughs> There was not Winston Churchill, thankfully. Um, the the twist was whatever. I mean, it, I don't know how you take the crime that's happening and make it interesting. Well, it's no, not the, very interesting. the issue is when I was watching when they do the twist, I'm kind of like, oh, so it wasn't more. I assumed it was Moriarty. Still, in my mind, I was like, mm. is like Moriarty not behind this? Like in my mind, I just I just assumed he was. Well, right when Sherlock was like. It has to be somebody that's been in the house. Yeah, yeah. And, and then you're like, oh. I'm like, oh. It's... And then I went, oh, well, there's only three options. It's either Hudson, Albert Einstein, or Harry Houdini. <laughs> and it was not Albert Einstein. No. Harry did it again. Oh, that... He escaped this time. <laughs> um, no. Yeah, I feel. I feel like this movie would work better, like this twist would work better if Moriarty wasn't in the movie at all. Yeah, because or like... Mori Moriarty isn't an essential part to like a Sherlock story because every Sherlock story will have obviously Watson and every Sherlock story will obviously have Lestrade, but you don't need a Moriarty. And I feel like if you don't have a Moriarty, then this twist could have actually worked. Um, it and Moriarty is on that, and really Moriarty does not have much to do in the film. No, he. No, that's what I mean. Like Ray Fiennes, I think I'd like to see him do some comedy stuff. But he was right. just sitting there, and he was just chilling out, and he was just he just stood there in all the scenes, and he kind of just smiled and just looked. Like you could have taken out all his scenes from the film, and it would still make sense. You could have literally just replaced him with like a tennis ball on a stick, and just <laughs> no one would notice. Yeah. Because he literally does like how many lines of dialogue does he have as well? He's a... does he I have any? Say... He, has at he least... does. He does in the he... wrestling bit, but I don't remember what yeah. he says. 
at me. It's, oh, no, it's he does, ridiculous. because that's revealed to not even be Moriarty. Right, right. Which is a dumb twist as well of them going, ah, oh, Sherlock, you were right. There was a guy who looks just like him and he, he masturbates. That's a bad joke in this movie. It, it's a really bad joke. Oh, honestly, I'm starting to regret going, oh, let's make a podcast. How about every three weeks we watch a bad movie? This is interesting, right? <laughs> I mean, no, um, I'm sure it's interesting for people watching this. It's just not enjoyable for me. Right. Yeah. This was not an enjoyable movie to watch. The Suicide Squad, that was kind of enjoyable. Yeah. Like, like I, no, I enjoyed. I think this is without a shadow of a doubt, this is the worst one. Out yes, of one we've easily. Seen so far. There is not like there is not a question in my mind. The best maybe Suicide Squad. Let's see. We've done Phantom, Phantom Menace, Menace, Fantastic Four, Suicide Squad. Yeah, probably Suicide Squad. And then I think the next worst after this one is well, Fantastic Four stick. No, I would say Phantom Menace. Would you? I'm not sure. Because they have Duel of the Fates. That's good. That, yeah, it has an excellent bit. And I don't think Suicide yeah. Squad has anything. Yeah, that's what I was Yeah, saying. no, I they agree. Have... So I think we agree the ranking is Phantom Menace, Suicide Squad, Fant 4 Stick. This. Every other, just every other movie in existence. <laughs> um, okay, so moving on to the second part we need to fix about this movie, the humor. Uh, I think if we're casting British actors, this is a British film. So all the American politics jokes need to go out the window. Yes. Um, along with that whole... Even like the American jokes. Yeah, Well, maybe yeah. the American... I don't know. I think there's some... I mean, all these jokes could, so, no, not all of them. A lot of these jokes would just work better if they were structured better. And yes. I think there are some, Amer maybe like one of the gun ones. I think it would have been like a good, if you didn't make the gun one at the start of the movie, because I think when, they, when they're when they like, oh, are we going to fight these ladies? And then they're going, oh, you're forgetting we're Americans. And then they whip out guns. I think That's... that joke that joke would work if they hadn't mentioned guns like 10 times previously before this scene. I feel like right. that could have worked if they go, oh, we're Americans, and then they pull out guns, and then I feel like this movie has like a tendency to explain the jokes when they go, because if, if they didn't because they need all this build up to there being guns, because they're like, because Americans are well known for having guns, wink at camera. Did you know Americans have guns? They have guns. <laughs> Americans, we have guns. Oh, no they're way. not American. They would have guns. <laughs> Even like the female doctor stuff, I think could have worked. That when I was listening, I'm like, this should be funny. Why don't yeah. I find this? Yeah, funny. I feel like it would work better if we had in this. We've got the Watson character being intelligent and him being like, shut up, and Sherlock's being like, oh, a female doctor. Ugh. Yeah, see, that would have been so funny. And then, and then Watson's like, shh. You're embarrassing us. <laughs> that would have been better. Yes. So I'm going to write down all American jokes. All American political jokes. I'll write that. Yeah. Just, I, and I feel like there's too much slapstick comedy in this. And but. see, slapstick is hard because it is easy to love slapstick jokes and it's easy to hate slapstick jokes. Well, to be fair, if we're going like Rowan Atkinson in this, he is like, in in my mind, he is the best slapstick comedian in the world. I've always said this about Johnny English Three, the third one. It's not called Johnny English Three. I don't know what it's called. There is so before like most of the jokes, you can predict what's going to happen because it's like kind of obvious. But all the jokes are just still so hilarious, just because of the way he delivers them. And like right. the slapstick stuff in the world, it's still really funny. Just you know it's gonna happen, but it still like catches you by surprise how funny it is just because he's so good at it. Where I feel like that could like slapstick could work just if it's done better than in this. And also I feel like it's hard because I personally I feel like the era of slapstick humor is kind of yeah dying. No, I get that. Um don't give me I 
Dumb and Dumber is like one of my most favorite comedy movies of all time. But uh, I feel no, like no, that's a good example of slapstick, I think. Yeah. Or The Mask, another yeah. great example of slapstick. I think um, the Suicide Squad, which we talked about last week, has like ushered in a new era of slapstick comedy. Yeah, where it's just blood and <laughs> it's weasel drowning. That's the new <laughs> era of slapstick comedy. So the humor, the American jokes are out and just better timing. Yeah. And just not like spending so much time on these jokes. Or like, no, this is a... I feel like there are too many jokes which are explained. So jokes need... Okay, I'll write... This script needs to trust audience. Yeah, but then there are times like when they think they've killed Queen Victoria. After that scene, it's never like mentioned again or anything like that. And I think that scene could work better if like, like they... Like after it's happened, they 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 just talk about it a bit for the rest of the movie. Right. <laughs> yeah, they they never once talk about how the queen was dead, but just came back to life with no memory of her dying. <laughs> of no memory of just being hit in the head. And then... She's like, "Can I have a photo of that, Sophie?" <laughs> yeah, I I would say I do quite like the idea of the joke of both of them being attracted to the queen. That's funny. Or yeah. at least, well, at least Watson being attracted to the Queen, that might be yeah. funny because if, yeah. if this is a smart character, that's like his <laughs> one flaw, that could be funny. Yeah, that's good. And also, I quite like the joke of um, Sherlock trying on different hats constantly. I think that. Oh, yeah. And then the, fine, at the end, he gets. Yeah, no, that was And they kind of did that in Sherlock as well. I don't remember Sherlock. Amazing. I never finished Sherlock. I watched like the first two seasons and I fell off. I I think I did, haven't watched the first two series and have seen the end of it. So together we are really like, together you know, we have collectively yeah. seen. But they Sherlock. they tell a joke about um the hats at some point and that made me laugh. I feel like Sherlock the TV show is infinitely more funny than this. Yeah, because it's well written and it. But it's it's not even a comedy. I'm yeah. It's Apart like it's, last, as, it's as much of a bad, but... it's as much of a comedy as Breaking Bad is. Yeah, which is kind of the American equivalent. I think. Well, <laughs> 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 um, oh. okay. So the script needs to trust the audience, and American political jokes are down. Number three, the ending and character arcs. Yeah, so I think talking about the actual twist of Hudson I think if we get rid of Moriarty as a character or like you can have him in it just not like being connected to the main mystery then I think the Miss Hudson reveal could work right if they're like ah but I was doing it all along you need to give her a different motivation and I feel like even like her having some resentment for Sherlock and Holmes for like treating her like you said Sherlock and Holmes again <laughs> Oh my god! Because Holmes and Watson is Sherlock Holmes. Why? Is, whatever. Sherlock Holmes and John Watson. <laughs> yes, it could have worked if Hudson had an issue with Holmes and Watson for like screaming at her, and then like that was a part of her reasoning of yeah. like why she wanted to ruin them. Or his a counterpoint. We have less of a thing about Watson wanting to be a co-detective and all of that, which I guess you would anyway if we're making him the intelligent character. And instead, every time um, Hudson is like, oh, can I come along um, on this? Can I join you? And they're like, no. Mm. And then and then at the end, they kind of... And then the story is kind of what Sherlock accuses Watson of doing when he's all like, oh, you created this crime yourself, so that you'd look at so you could look impressive to us when you solve it and maybe that's hudson's plan that's a good idea so so what i think like maybe so what i'm what i'm thinking for this right is in the the issue is in the original film is that he watson wants to be a co-detective right yeah but for this i don't think maybe instead of him wanting to be a co-detective for like all of Sherlock's career, Watson has kind of been the one pulling the strings, but Sherlock yeah. is just the 
and and then Sherlock's arc is learning to not only like appreciate Watson, but also like appreciate Hudson as well. Hmm. Okay. And, yeah, and maybe you can tie him not appreciating Hudson into the um like doctor jokes with the whatever the lady's called. Oh yeah, that's true as well. So <laughs> lady and, doctor. And then the end of the film is like Watson and Sherlock becoming co-detectives, but it's not that because Watson wants to be a co-detective, but it's because yeah. Watson wants credit for his work. Yeah. So now they're a team. Yeah. I just I can't get over the song. I just don't understand it. <laughs> oh, the song's gone. No song. No song. I just don't understand. All. Just don't understand. And also, uh, I think, yeah, we get rid of like the B joke from earlier, so and the wrestling joke is quite funny. Yes. Because it the that wrestling joke is actually, I would say, the best executed film, a best executed bit in the film. Yeah. But yeah. it doesn't work because we already know it's going to happen. And so, okay, wait. So I'm, I'm, I'm reconfirming this. So what's the arc with Miss Hudson? She's basically, she wants to join Watson and Sherlock, but they don't let her. So then she creates this crime so then she can solve it and uh. then look impressive. Kind of like it's, it's Syndrome from The Incredibles. Right. You're like... <laughs> because that like, that's literally what Sherlock accuses Watson of doing. And then when I saw that, right. you obviously know that Watson didn't do it. But in that moment, right. I'd be like, that would have been quite interesting if he did do it. Okay, so basically... Syndrome. Okay, so I think I have the fixed version of Sherlock and Holmes. God! <laughs> Holmes and Watson. I, I'm going to do a Sherlock and Holmes super cut. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Holmes and Watson. Holmes and Watson casted with British actors in the leads. Yes. Who, we don't know, goes back and forth. Rowan Atkinson, not James Corden. That's the rule. Anyone other than James Corden. Yeah, there we go. Both of them can't be stupid. Watson is going to be the smart one, and Sherlock is stupid, creating an interesting dynamic with his new characters. All American political jokes gone. This is this is based. This is an actual English film, not actors pretending to be English. And the script needs to trust the audience for jokes, so set it up when the setup would make it funnier. But you know. If it's an easy joke to understand, you don't have to f explain every corner of it. Um, and the Moriarty is less of a part of the story to make the Hudson twist work. Um, Watson desires credit for his work. And once, you know, Hudson creates a crime to be appreciated by Sherlock and Watson to prove them to prove to them that she is worthy, you know, Watson and Sherlock figure it out. Da, 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 movie ends and the movie ends with them becoming co-detectives um and watson gets credit for all his work over the years yes that, that's very good well done us and bad job eaton cohen and will ferrell and john c Riley. bad and well i no never mind i can't blame the other actors in this film because they were just trying yeah. to get money do you think the end of this movie was trying to set up a sequel? Like the actual last scene? No. Do you know? They couldn't have. They had to have known by the end of this film that this was not going to be any good. But it, would they have known that? At what point would they have realised? Is it while they're shooting? Is it in the editing? Because I'm sure if you were on set, you might have found it quite funny. Because I don't know how much of it is actually improv. But, right, because I'm sure there's some people in this world that like this movie. Because as I said... Oh, Tom... have you not seen... Somebody on my TikTok once said, oh, that's one of my favourite movies. What makes it hard is the comedy is the yeah, most exactly. subjective. Exactly. And But like, it did really yeah, shock me when someone was like, that's one of my favourite movies. I was like... It was kind of the, like, because I've always said that that's the thing I've said when I'm, I'm like, the thing I've learned about being on TikTok is that no matter how universal you think an opinion is, there is someone who disagrees with you. Yes, for sure. There, there are fans of everything, but this is true. But, but just 
part of me thought there was a limit to that. I mean, wrong. let's be honest. If anybody really loves this movie, they have not gotten this far into this. No, yeah, they probably didn't. Were they? They were probably like, looked at the title. and They're like, oh, and they stop watching. They didn't even click on the video yeah. or the Spotify. But like, button. what is it like? I want to see some of these like audience scores and stuff. What would okay? What would you give this movie out of ten? Out of ten? Yes. I give it a one out of ten. I I would give it a one out of ten. Not a zero out of ten. I'm, I know I give it a one out. So it's got a 3.8 on IMDb and 10% on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. Which is 10% still feels like a lot to me of like 10% of critics watch this and thought, this is a good movie. Yeah. Like this is better than being bad. I'm going to see if I can find a single like slightly positive review from the critics. Nope. Um, and so this one is um, very dumb and occasionally very funny. Yeah. There are movies which make me angry, and this is on that list. Yeah, the one For my money, this is a laughing, laugh out movie ideal for a relaxing Friday night. So even, even the like good reviews are like, this is, I mean, this isn't a good movie, but it's like fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Th- this one is interesting. Smart about how it's stupid. The comedy suggests an embrace of remorseless logic with a- will only rot your soul and friendships. Yeah, it's a movie in which John C. Riley lactates, but it also says more than you'd expect about the milk of human kindness. It literally doesn't say anything. <laughs> about... It's just Sherlock discovers emotions. That's but it. The, what happens is Sherlock realizes, oh, this guy that I literally spend every waking hour with, maybe I should should give him like a like a morse a, a morsel, a single morsel of respect. So dumb. And and we didn't even talk about the fact that John C. Riley lactates. No, we didn't. I when I saw that, I was just like. That might be the worst joke in this. I, think. I expected it. Like it, 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 it didn't even phase me. I was just like, "This is happening. This is a movie I'm watching. I need to finish this so I can go to bed." <laughs> I just, I, I don't know how many more weeks I can. We, our original plan, I think, was to do this every week. Right, and then we were and, like, and we then I feel like I feel like I, I would have not survived if i have to watch a movie this bad every week no i'm very glad we have like two weeks in between yeah we but the good news is we get to watch a good movie every third week hopefully because it's someone's favorite oh yeah that's true that's true we get the good and the bad yeah anyway i think that brings us to an end of this podcast forever never doing it again after today well besides next tuesday and the tuesday after that and for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Just, just can we just watch like a slightly better movie? <laughs> yeah, we can watch Jack and Jill next time. <laughs> I've never seen it. Um, You've never seen? Actually, I've only seen like the first twenty minutes, and then I stopped watching it. But I it, think it can we just worse. choose something like, choose something at like Phantom Menace, Suicide Squad level that I can handle. But like, we'll if see. we watch another Fant Four Stick, or homes and what if we watch like cats See, i'm not I, we're not watching I, I'm, that's gonna be way down the road i i cannot think about doing that one right now <laughs> um you know what about I prefer... baby driver i really hate that movie <laughs> oh terrible movie oh that one's the worst <laughs> you know i prefer that watching this movie over fan four sick though just because fan four sick was absurdly boring I feel like this was kind of boring as well, though. But it's like, it's like. No, you yeah. I kind of get that, but like, but like, a movie being dull is better than what this movie is for me personally, because this makes me angry. Where, where when I'm watching something boring, I just feel no emotions. Like Fan Stick doesn't really evoke much emotion in me. No, it doesn't. But that that could be boring though. Yeah, if you were like movies which evoke the most emotion in me, this might be in like the top twenty. <laughs> uh, that's that's a good rank. That's a good ranking list for you. I feel like, I feel like the movie that might make me the most emotional is Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker. 
or the last jedi i feel i think so yeah or at least when people talk to you the last jedi yeah no i don't even dislike the rise of skywalker that like as much as i dislike other star wars movies but it's just like really i don't think it's the worst one Attack of the Clones. I think it's very close to the worst. It, no, you're right. It's very one. no, but it, what I'm trying to say is it's no way the worst movie in the world. But if I mean, we're, we're I'm sure we're inevitably going to talk about it. But when we talk about it on this, I think that's going to make me more angry than any other movie we've talked about. Just because out of all these movies, I think it has the most potential. Yes, definitely, definitely, and like probably the biggest budget out of any movie we're going to talk about as well well at least it's not as bad as the last jedi anyways it looks like we are out of time for today uh any last words time, pal. <laughs> 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 the camera glitched out again and it just cut out to you like right up to the screen <laughs> Okay. Uh, no, uh, we've been prolonging the inevitable for long enough, so I think we should end it there. All right. Adios, everybody. I'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>